Last week, I published a video on how to get started with Dolby Atmos in Cubase 12. And that video was very well received. And as a result of that, I got a lot of questions, many of them very, very interesting. Now, I have not done a question and answer video for quite some time. So I figured this might actually be a good opportunity to do another one of those. So today I'm going to answer some of the questions that you had. But before I do that, first of all, hello, everybody. In case you're new here, my name is Michael Wagner. I teach at the Antoinette Westfall College of Media Arts and Design at Drexel University in Philadelphia. And on this channel, I talk about digital media, game design and spatial audio. And if any of those topics interest you, I invite you to subscribe or join my Discord server. An invite link in this, is in the description below. And with that being said, let's get to some of your questions. I'm going to do it a little bit different today. Instead of quoting the actual questions, I'm going to paraphrase them because many of you asked similar questions. And the first one was with respect to the setup assistant. Uh, so in, in essence, why didn't I use the setup assistant in Cubase 12? Now, for those of you who are not aware of that, but with Cubase 12, Steinberg uh, integrated a setup assistant and it actually also is now part of Nuendo 12. And that setup assistant helps you in um, essentially getting started with Dolby Atmos. And it does pretty much the same thing that I did last week. So in order to understand where the differences are and why I actually did not use it, let's have a brief look into how that actually works. I'm going to start with the very same project that I used last week. And uh, for those of you who have not seen that video, and by the way, if you haven't seen it yet, I invite you to watch it. I'm going to post the link in the description below. Uh, this was a loop that I essentially created for a game audio video that I did a while back. And uh, the content comes from the demo bank that comes with the Ubershall Elastic Player. So uh, if you want to recreate it, you could actually do that by just downloading the demo bank. But anyway, so let's just have a brief listen on how that sounds. And the idea was essentially to uh, take that little loop and turn it into an Atmos track. And the way we did that is we did that manually by adding the Atmos bus and an Atmos bed and then kind of routing everything correctly into the Atmos renderer. Now, uh, in Cubis 12, and once again, also now in Nuendo 12, you actually have the option to use the setup system. So how, so how are we going to do that? Well, uh, the only thing you need to do is you need to go into the ADM authoring panel for Dolby Atmos. And in the ADM authoring panel, you now have this little setup assistant and uh, let's click on that so as soon as we click on that uh, it opens up and uh, we now can choose what we want to have the Cubase create for us um, and obviously what we want to do is we want to add a the renderer so so we we click on that so we add a main mix channel with the renderer and we also want to have a bad channel i mean i can choose not to do that so in case for example i already have a bad channel and i don't want to recreate one uh, but in our case we just kind of starting blank so let's just add one so we add the bed and uh, also one thing that i did is i routed all individual tracks that i had into that bed that might or might not be necessary depending on the type of project that you're working with but in order to recreate what we did last week let's just uh, route every all tracks into the bed channel i can also choose the configuration of the bed channel so i have a couple of different options here i usually choose the one with the highest channel count which is a 7.1.2 track and then we simply say okay and as soon as i say okay it essentially is going to create everything pretty much everything that i did last week automatically it's going to create the uh the um essentially the, the atmos bus it's going to put a renderer into the atmos bus it's going to create this the bed and it's going to route all my tracks into that into that bed so everything is essentially done for me now if i now start playing that I'm not hearing anything. And the reason I'm not hearing anything is because of a slight difference to the way I actually did that. Now, if you remember in the video that I created, the uh, Atmos bus was essentially a group track. Now, the way the setup assistant does it is that it uh, does not create a group track. What it really does, it creates an output bus. So um, because I don't really use the um, control room feature, the output bus is currently not routed to anything so i uh, before i can actually hear anything i need to i need to create the control room so if you if you're using and um, to make a long story short if you're using these setup assistants you need to work with the control room and this is actually the main reason why i didn't do it that way and i'm going to come back to that in a second but let's just fix the uh the control room issue so we need to go into the audio connections and i'm going to essentially disconnect uh the uh, stereo out because i'm once again in the current setup not using the control room Room and going into the control room and connecting the control room instead 
And this should now fix the audio. So let's just see if I hear anything. Yes, so, so essentially I'm back. So uh, the, the thing is that uh, the, the main difference here is that instead of using a group track, the setup assistant creates, the, uh, creates an output bus. And uh, this output bus then needs to be routed into the control room in order to be able to hear it. Other than that, it's pretty much exactly the same, exactly the way I did it. Uh, now, why uh, did I not use uh, the setup assistant? Well, um, the main reason is that I uh, at some point stopped using the control room feature and that has a very particular reason. Um, if we want to, for example, add uh, head tracking with Waves and X in particular, uh, the problem that we have with Waves and X is that Waves and X is technically an ambisonics uh, plugin, uh, but it uh, identifies itself as a quadraphonic plugin. And um, I did a video once about uh, the, how we can kind of circumvent that, and I'm going to post a link in the description below. But that essentially means that I cannot put the Waves and X plugin onto the control room bus because uh, it, uh, it, I, I would not be able to fool uh, Cubase or Noendo into believing that this is actually a, uh, a correct plugin. So what I needed to do is I needed to create a quadraphonic bus and use that quadraphonic bus as, a, um, as an ambisonics bus uh, where I could put the Waves and X on there. And the only way to really do that is by having the, ambi the Atmos bus not an output bus, but instead a group track. And that's really the main reason why I'm using that. Once again, if you're not using uh, Waves and X, if you're not using any head tracking, this is probably not an issue for you. And uh, if you want to know exactly what I'm talking about, I'm going to post a link in the description below to that particular video, where I essentially kind of uh, explain that uh, that workaround. This video was done for Nuendo 11, but it works, uh, it works essentially the same for Nuendo 12, and you can also do it in exactly the same way uh, with Cubase. Now, um, that's pretty much it. That's the reason I did not use the uh, the setup uh, feature in Cubase. But I have to say that this is actually done very, very nicely. So if you are completely new to, to Cubase and now also Nuendo, and if you're completely new to Dolby Atmos, this is a, a way to actually get started very, very quickly. Uh, it hides a little bit in exactly what it's doing, and that might not be advisable. So, for example, if you have something that's a little bit more convoluted and you need to be uh, completely clear about what routing goes where, I would still do the manual routing and I would still kind of set up everything manually. But if you if you have a very standard project like this one, for example, uh, that does not really require a lot of thinking about how things are routed correctly, then the setup feature is certainly, the setup assistant feature is certainly a nice way to go. Now, the second question is a question that I actually hear a lot, uh, and that has to do with the format of the bad channel. And the question was, and is quite often, why do you use a 7.1.2 channel layout for the Dolby Atmos track? Isn't Dolby Atmos 7.1.4? Uh, do, don't we lose something if we use a 7.1.2 channel layout? And that's actually a very good question, which unfortunately and not really good answer. Now, the reason I'm doing it that way is because it is a requirement. There's just no way around that. So Dolby at the moment at least requires bad tracks to be in a 10 channel layout. And we can actually see that if we go into the Dolby Atmos renderer guidelines or in the Dolby Atmos renderer specifications. And uh, if we go in this specification, they're quite lengthy, by the way. So if you read everything, there's a lot of stuff in there. But if we go into where are we, uh, into the configuring, configuring rendering inputs, uh, we can actually see uh, the uh, the way essentially bad tracks are supposed to be configured in the Dolby Atmos renderer. And uh, here we uh, see that uh, the uh, if, you, if you want to assign uh, a certain number of channels to a bad, um, this is the way you would do that. And these are the options that you have. Now, if we go into the guidelines, it actually says that the choices um, are include. That it essentially means that there is uh, the possibility that they might add certain options. But at the moment, these are the choices that you have. And these are also the choices that are available to you in the Cubase 12 or Nuendo 12 internal renderer. And that essentially means, uh, and this is a little bit of a bummer, uh, all of the possibilities that you have uh, are limited to two overhead 
speakers. Uh, so you do, don't really have the option to have a fully immersive bed. Um, for that, you would need more than two overhead speakers. Um, you only have the option to go up to 7.1.2. When I uh, researched that particular question, I was hoping that I could do a 5.1.4 because that would also be a ten channel layout, but it would have four overhead channels and therefore be completely 3D and completely immersive. But no, this is not possible. So at least not at the moment. At the moment, the best you can do is a 7.1.2. Uh, and that's essentially why we're doing it that way. Now, the fact that the actual Dolby bus then kind of converts everything into 7.1.4 is a completely different story. If you're working with the Dolby Atmos Mastering Suite, you have many more options. Uh, but for the home theater version, this is sort of the standard. So, so those are, in, in essence, to come back to the question why I'm using in a, a 7.1.2 uh, bed track in a 7.1.4 Atmos project, uh, this is essentially the best you can do right now. The 7.1.4 is the maximum you can achieve uh, with Cubase or Nuendo in, in terms of the actual Dolby Atmos output and 7.1.2 is the maximum you can get uh, for bad channels. Now the next question is one that I'm actually getting quite often and that is where can I find examples for immersive audio projects? In all honesty, there isn't really much out there. So there aren't really any repositories where there are a lot of projects in terms of immersive audio. That's why in my Discord community, I've recently created a separate channel that I call the Immersive Music Cafe. So if you have anything that you want to share or if you're interested in um, hearing what other people are doing or what other people find interesting, I invite you to join my Discord community. Invite link once again is in the description below and uh, go to the Immersive Music Cafe and hear what other people are doing. Or if you have anything that you want to share, just post it there and uh, we would be very happy to hear your stuff and to exchange ideas and give feedback and all kinds of things. So uh, if you're interested in these types of things, once again, please join my Discord community in that link is in the description below. The next question is one that I'm also getting very, very often. And unfortunately, that one doesn't really have a very good answer. And that is, how can I create a video that includes Dolby Atmos audio? Um, you know, kind of talking about Dolby Atmos music, but I would actually like to create Dolby Atmos videos um, and share that with everybody. How can I do that? Now, unfortunately, that is not very straightforward to do. In essence, what Cubase and Nuendo allow us to do is to export a Dolby Atmos master file through the Dolby Atmos renderer. And that essentially means that the, uh, the, the audio part will always be disconnected from the video part. So in order to be able to really create a Dolby Atmos capable video or a video with Dolby Atmos music content, I actually need a particular type of software that is capable of doing that. One such software is DaVinci Resolve Studio, so the paid version of DaVinci Resolve. And I've just opened up an empty project here, so I apologize if everything is a little bit small, but we just need it for one thing. And that is if you create a video that has Dolby Atmos content in it, uh, the way you would export that is by using the IMF profile. Uh, and the IMF profile is essentially the thing that you would use if you would produce videos for a streaming service such as Netflix or Disney. Um, so in the IMF profile, you can then choose either the Netflix uh, or the Disney uh, profile, and that would allow you to actually include Dolby Atmos into a video. But the problem with that is that the IMF format is a very elusive format. So it's really only ever used for deliverables, for creating deliverables for uh, streaming services. So uh, there aren't really any players out there or any consumer friendly software that would allow you to turn it into something that you can actually then listen to or hear or watch on a regular computer or a regular uh, Dolby Atmos capable consumer device. There's one piece of software that allows you to work with IMF projects and that is the IMF Studio by Fraunhofer. Now because this is a software that really is only ever used by professionals, it is relatively expensive, but you could use that in order to kind of convert an IMF project into something that you can actually watch. So if you really want to create video with uh, Dolby Atmos Audio, the way you would have to do that is first create the Dolby Atmos content in a system like Cubase or Nuendo or even in DaVinci Resolve, then uh, ins insert everything into a DaVinci Resolve Studio project, export that in an IMF format, and then use IMF Studio in order to convert it into something that you can play on a consumer device. So it's, it's a rather involved process. Unfortunately, I have not yet found a better solution. If you know anything uh, that's out there that kind of allows uh, to shortcut that process or make it less expensive as it is right now, because once again, the IMF uh, Studio Creator is very expensive, uh, then let me know. I would be really interested because I'm getting that question actually quite often. And unfortunately, right now, there isn't really a good answer to that.
But the final question I want to answer today is one that I actually never got. That was more of a question that I actually asked myself. And that is, why does the meter disappear if I turn an audio track into Adobe Atmos object? And that is very curious. That never ever found that to be an issue. It was something that puzzled me when I first saw it. Um, so I decided to answer that. So this is really a question I asked myself. Um, before I answer that, let me show you what I mean. This is the project where I left it after using the Dolby Atmos setup assistant. And uh, uh, essentially all the tracks are currently routed into the bed channel or in the, the, into the bed track. It's a group track. And if I play this track, I essentially see all the individual meters uh, doing their thing. Um, and essentially everything is essentially is working exactly the way it's supposed to work. So essentially I see all the metering going on, but let's see what happens if I turn some of these uh, tracks into objects. And for that, let's go into the project settings, into the ADM authoring for Dolby Atmos. And uh, let's do the same thing that we did last week. So let's add uh, three objects and let's uh, use, uh, what did we have? We have the, I think the keys, uh, we had the, the synth and we had the bass. Where's the bass? Here's the bass. And uh, uh, that's essentially everything that we did. Now I'm not going to change anything of the uh, positioning data. You, you, that's very straightforward, but let's just see what's happening to the meters here. And as you can see, the meters disappeared. So I'm not really seeing anything anymore. Why is this the case? Well, the reason this is the case is because of the way the standard settings for the meters are done. So if I'm clicking on uh, one of the meters, so essentially right clicking and I go to the global meter settings, I, s I essentially see, and I can't see that here because I'm in the way of everything. So let's just use that one. So if I'm, I'm, I'm going in here, I see that the meter position is set to post panner. Now, because it said because these panners are actually Dolby Atmos panners, um, they are not really allowing any audio through. The way this works is that the panner actually kind of forwards that audio directly into the Dolby Atmos renderer. So after the panner, there is actually no audio in the track anymore. Uh, and that's why I'm not seeing anything in the meters. There's, there's just nothing to meter. So in order to actually see that, I need to set the global meter settings from um, post panner to post fader and now it's essentially metering the audio before the panner after the fader and uh, as soon as i do that i essentially have this meter spec now the disadvantage now is that uh, because of uh, setting the the, uh, the meters to post fader i'm no longer seeing the uh, effect the the panning has on all tracks that are routed into the uh, into the group track or in any group track really. So it becomes a little bit a question of what you prefer. I personally uh, like to see the uh, audio the way it comes from the objects, but uh, you just need to be aware that if you set the meter, the global meter settings to post fader, then any objects will not show any meters because there is just no, no audio that leaves the um, Dolby Atmos panner. That audio goes directly into the renderer and is therefore not visible on the on the regular mixer. Now, this is really everything I wanted to say today. Uh, thank you so much for watching my videos. I really appreciate that. Um, for me, this is a little bit a labor of love. That's almost something that I do as part of my day job, really, um, kind of educating people. And uh, it's really very enjoyable for me. And I learn a lot by interacting with you all. So if you have any questions or any comments, please use the comment section or join my Discord community. Uh, I really, I really like kind of interacting with everybody and kind of learning from from everybody and there are many things actually kind of learned over the last couple of things i'm probably the one person that learns the most in this in these videos now um having said that there is one thing that is very interesting that i will probably cover next week or at least in one of the following weeks and that is the release of nuendo 12. so many of the things that we discussed in connection with cubis 12 are now also part of of nuendo 12 and there are a couple of additional features that are interesting so uh if you're interested in these types of topics please subscribe um there a couple of Nuendo 12 videos coming up. And with that being said, see you at the next video.